All right, welcome back down to Chief's Pit. We got Timmy, Mark, and Richie Petty. We're gonna dive into a little memory we had growing up here, 1982, Michigan. I guess it was June, right? Yes, it was summer race. Right, and uh, they were they were pretty they close in the summer. They were pretty close. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Within a couple of weeks, yeah. Uh, that's the how first they did. Michigan. That's how they did and I don't, I Michigan. don't realize, I don't real, I don't remember why it was, but it was the four of us, and we drove up to Michigan in a, po- a Pontiac Bonneville. Yeah. And uh, I don't know why mother didn't go to that race. She probably needed a break from us. Maybe. I mean, everybody was, what, <laughs> was 12, 13 years, years old? That was one of the few times yeah. just us three went with. Yeah. Well, maybe yeah. well, as we're going to tell the stories about that trip. Maybe Daddy just wanted us to be yeah, a part of it. Yeah, it might have been. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was a fun little trip. Yeah. But anyway, the, the start, we're going to start there at that trip on the way up there. Uh, we got up there on the other side of West Virginia on a two-lane road. And it was the middle of the night, and Daddy's let Timmy start driving. <laughs> One of the few times I've dozed off driving. <laughs> but anyway. He, he called because of. Blah, 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 blah. But anyway, Timmy let the gas needle get down on the E. Plus. <laughs> and this is before all these uh, sheets and big old gas stations were every, every other mile. So it all wasn't nothing. The bad was the middle of nowhere. Was what we no, I'm just saying, I, I remember that because we was out in the middle of nowhere and Daddy, you know, he didn't see that man panic. He always was. He, he, he knew when things were, he was starting to panic a little bit because he could foresee us running out of gas. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, we had never drove that car much, I don't think. But well, anyway. We had, luckily, we found the gas station, and all ends well that starts well, I guess. So we went up early, right? Yeah. And we went to Diamond Racing, and for some reason, we had to go to General Motors. Well, this was 82. Right. And they just had come off of... Uh, the eighty one deal and they run the Pontiac. Well daddy well, they, they, they were in negoti- they were in negotiations at the time for the eighty three season to go into Chevrolet. But those fell through and went back with Pontiac. Okay. Well I see I, I remember some of the story and I Maybe remember. it was Buick. Maybe it was trying to get back with the Buick and it was the Pontiac. Whichever one it was. I, I think wasn't. it was because wasn't Diamond really instrumental in the V6 Buick program? Yes. yes so yes. I, I would I would about bet venture to say it was more of a Buick. Yes. Because they were right. running double team Buicks. Right. right. And yeah, you know, that was right around the time that well, was 80. For some reason, Daddy was pretty instrumental in putting all that yeah. stuff together. So 81. Well, he was still helping run Petty Enterprise. So, so 80, 80, 81, that was, it was Buicks. In 82, it went to Pontiac. And like you said, I think they were renegotiating. I think one of the big things that worked out there was Daryl and Junior were doing a Buick for the next year. And I think that was that was going to be one of their big teams. So that kind of took away. So then the Pontiac. Yeah, it ain't no time. But, it, but like you said, it was it was the four of us went up there and we went to them. Uh, we, we got to go. Right, because yeah. we got to go on some business trips. We wasn't involved I with the business. I don't know who, 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 who Daddy was meeting with. I, I just it was at the GM factory though, because we, we had to sit. We went through a lot. We, we sit in the lobby, didn't we? Yeah, we couldn't. We, y'all, <laughs> y'all was too young yeah. to go through there, but I was able to yep. go through it. And, and we went to eat with the uh, with the Diamond Racing, which Diamond Racing back in the day was pistons and heads and other little components for racing. And Daddy was good friends with all those guys. With Butch Elkins. Butch Elkins, and we went to eat lunch yeah. with Butch, and uh, they. Uh, but anyway, they he had a good relationship with those guys for and many, played, many years. Even up into their truck racing. Y'all got to see where they stuff. made the pistons. Yes, we watched it. Yeah, it was really neat. Because that was before CNC machine had really took off, and they'd already had those. And they were sitting there, and the, it was it would tool itself and make it. And I was always amazed. And that was before I had my machine and yeah. background. We were but at the kids. time, yeah, but we it was cool. Old, yeah. I remember Stafford and Curtis Wright up there working machines by hand. And these machines were self-tooling machines just went going. Grab the tool yep, and go. started cutting. Oh, it was awesome. But uh, is that the same race where we was you, going back to a, another episode? But were one, one of the greatest races we didn't know, and, and and another one that the king did not win. But how good a racing it was! He started out seventh or eighth in the field, and on lap one he was leading the pack. By the time I got back at Michigan. Well, you got to think, too, if you look, we're talking we're in the middle of the 82 season, and this was the beginnings of the Petty Enterprises Demise. tearing apart because Kyle was fixing to go drive that race 
do races with Hoss because they right, the one. they were splitting that up, and that's that's a whole different story. But this is what this was, I believe, the last race that the forty three and forty two full time because Kyle would still run the forty two some races and right, the one some tracks, races, yeah. right? But it, it but, wasn't, but it was yeah, not a full back team. But. Richard started ninth, tenth, eleventh, something like that, and like you said, he he passed them all on the first lap, and they ran about ten laps, and he yarded the field. And then they had a caution. They pitted, and they was working on the car. They was having to take wedge out or put wedge in, whatever. Beating on the spoiler. Beating on the But anyways, so when they went back out, Kyle was running second, and dang if he didn't take the lead. Right. But then it ended up raining, and they ran it the next day. But them first 15, 20 laps of that race was pretty See, awesome. Yeah, back in them days, Michigan on the bias supply tire, you really – you had to you had to put a lot of wedge in because you're sitting there riding on that right rear, and they'd smoke him on things. But uh, I think they I think they jacked him out of the frame a little bit. Had a little bit too much in there. Cause, well, yeah, but, but as the day went on, because it was rainy, if it was good to start with, and as the track came in and more rubber got on the racetrack, it tightened up even more. Yeah, I am. And but like I said, some of our subject matter about the greatest races, even though they didn't win, that that was good hard. Well, racing. And, and for me, you know, you, you listen to different ones talk about. Petty Enterprise is breaking up. And a lot of times they say, well, we didn't have no power, but there he was in the middle of 1982 and watched them two cars run at Michigan. Going to the front. Ain't, well, they had plenty of power that day. Oh, but yeah. um, but that was a good weekend. We got <laughs> to hang sure. out. I guess, how old was we? About 12, 14. Yep. And we got to hang out in the garage. We had two cars there. Had the 42 to 43. Yep. It was We was having a big time. It just, just I'm talking about us. You were actually working. Well, we who, were playing with we, 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 <laughs> yeah. we got the wax yeah. car. Yeah. Who, who was it that y'all got to meet? Well, as afterwards. Okay. Yeah, because after the race, who ended up winning that race? I think Kale Yarborough. Was it Kale? Well, yeah, I think Kale won it the next day in MC's car. Him and Daryl had rain. We had him and Daryl had a classic battle for the win of that race. Cause, yeah. Yeah, because we stayed the extra night. I remember sitting up there. We had HBO in the room. We got to watch Stripes. <laughs> I know that, that was that was a big deal. But, but the, the race ran out Sunday. We come back. They come back and run it yeah. Monday. But we went to eat that night. It was one of the coolest things ever. Cause yeah, because we, we were sitting there, and uh, I think I got some. Uh, they had, there was a it was a little cafe type place, wasn't it? What was it? I, man, I you got me. I mean, I, I don't. Know. But it was out in the middle of nowhere because you're up there in the Irish Hills, Michigan. Did we still stay in Adrian? But it was back. Over, but this was back over towards Coldwater. Right. Right, because that's where right. Gordon Jockock was from, and that's right. where we run into so, there. So yeah. we were we were sitting there eating, yeah. And uh, you know, we 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 knew Daddy was a big deal, but we didn't realize that big a deal. Well, here comes Gordon Jockock in, makes a beeline right to the table. Hi, Maurice. Hi, boys. How are you? And this is this, June of 1982. This is the guy that just won the Indianapolis yep. 500. Hundred. 
We're, we're, we're sitting over a jaw. <laughs> <You're like, "Pah." laughs> so starstruck. Yeah, because we, we, yeah, there's Gordon John got, but he come over and he said, "Hey, Maurice, how are you?" Because he's STP car at the time. Yeah, they so, obviously knew each other right, through STP. So no idea. But that was that and was a big deal. Well, no, we, but we got to, we got. Oh, no, but we knew he'd won the Indy 500. Right, yeah, for yeah. sure. So, you know, I, I, I don't know where it was at. Like later on, either Nazareth or somewhere, and and we were in there, and I think. It, it's where Mario was from. Yeah, they were and, from Mario. And he yeah. came in there one night, and it was just like, you know, to me, that's that's when I get starstruck is when you see somebody like that. Oh, the racer, the racers we grew up with, whether it was David Pearson or Bobby Allison. I mean, they were like just that. one of the guys. Yeah. I mean, our our family was, you know, the Petties and we had some big names, but we still were starstruck by those guys because they were they were our heroes growing up. When we're sitting here talking memories, nineteen eighty two. We talk about the 4th of July Daytona race. You know, they started at 10 o'clock in the morning, and then usually after the race, most everybody went back to the motel and hung out hung out the pools. And it, the different teams would stay at the motel. But I can remember 1982, Bobby Allison had won the race, and we was already back at the motel playing in the pool. And here come Bobby in with his uniform on with the trophy from the race <laughs> yeah. right there on the deck of the yeah. pool. Oh, yeah. I'll cool. tell you, I'm going to add to that, not one up you, but – well, no, that's, I'm used to it. <laughs> in, in, in 87, uh, that was, you know, well, I was at Stavola's, and same thing happened. And Bobby brought the trophy back, set it down. So it must have been a tradition for it, him. He, he, I mean, Bobby Allison, like I said, he knew a little something about Daytona, that not just anybody well, did. Absolutely. But to me, the, the memories we're talking of, too, it's, it's just like when everybody did, like everybody didn't race to the airport to get on the plane and go home after uh, the race. and. Everybody had to drive home and go to work, but the Daytona week, it seemed like most of the crews would get to stay a day or two and enjoy Daytona Beach. And, and for a future episode here, we've got to get the Almond Boys in here with Keith because he'll he'll tell that story and how Bobo <laughs> and Cy was going around and being the waiters. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, the Miller beer and all that. But uh, yeah. Anyway, go, let's go back to Daddy son. What, 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 what else we got? Wait, the Eighty-two. Oh, we got, yeah. With the eighty-two. Uh, uh, Michigan, I mean, we do When we're talking about how great a time we had going with him on that trip. Right. And, and we got to go do stuff because we didn't do a lot of that. But little did we know what kind of pressure cooker he was oh, living in. But definitely. You know. And well, rather than two cars. Absolutely. With the, with the, yeah, that's All how, of them. Yep. Oh, yeah. But, um, we, you know, that was when he started calming down a little bit anyway, right? I think so. And, you know, 83, the, the you run a whole season there with him, and um, it was pretty much it after that, mm-hmm. as far as that goes. Yeah, but I, I remember you talking about well, he would go back to Michigan. You, you go to Michigan, and you always stayed about an hour away from the racetrack because mm-hmm. whatever. So it'd be five o'clock in the morning, you'd be heading to the racetrack. Well, Daddy would drive to the racetrack, work all day long, <laughs> right? And then yes. you know somebody would from the crew would help drive home, but he'd drive home. And I remember we'd get home what seven o'clock in the morning. Drop us off, and he'd he'd drop us off, and he'd come to work. Yeah, between eight and nine o'clock in the morning, you could about set your watch on it, and you'd pull in there, and he would walk in there, and had like a shout, but he didn't really take a shower. He just went over and wiped his face off. He did change his shirt and yep. go straight to work. There you go. On Monday morning, well, on Tuesday days, morning, in that particular case, it was Tuesday. They, they, they had to go to work. Days one time, I remember we come home from that second Michigan race. And we started school the next day. Yep. Oh, yeah. Because mom would be on our case about y'all got to sleep on the way home yeah, tonight because yeah, yeah. you got to go to school in the morning. Mm. But, yeah. Well, what, oh, what fun it was, though, as soon as we get out for summer, usually Michigan or Pocono was where we'd go to. That would be your first summer race. Yep. And, you know. They, they, well, both days back to back. pretty right? much called it the Yankee Tour because that's yeah. where you went. You went all the northern races in that uh, I summer I guess it would probably be Pocono would probably have been the first one. And then you went to the Michigan. Right. Then you went to Daytona. Well, how many times did you get out of And then you went again to Pocono, Michigan. Went, then you went again, yeah. And then Dover. Yeah. And yeah. Where Dover, else? Dover would have been like before June there. Where else did they go then? Texas. Well, see, I never, had, I don't, we didn't go to Dover a lot as kids because yeah. it was always, we were year. still in school. Yeah. Right. It'd be the end of the school year and yeah. start of school September year. September and what, what, what part of the. But they used to do Texas World Speedway about June the 14th, somewhere in there. And then they'd go right to Pocono and then back to Michigan and then the. Daytona. But but like I say, we got a lot of great memories of Michigan and Pocono because we'd drive them. Then they races. do Riverside somewhere in there. And another thing about the Pocono yeah, deal, which we we talked to. Um, I was uh, later on Riverside. 
Kevin and uh, Keith Parsons. Keith Parsons, yep. because they 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 do remember these people. And Daddy, before he passed away, he was asking me, "Hey, what was those people that we'd go to?" And it, well, they did a block party where they had spaghetti, and I mean, it was just a smorgasbord. Yep, yep, yep. But the Allisons went, Benny Parsons' crowd went, we went, and gosh, who else went? Probably just. But that Probably was, more people than we knew. But that was one of the things that we did when we went to Pocono, a little old town on the way to it, and that was a good memory for Daddy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. You know? Mm. And, and Michigan people at the racetrack would cook corn. Oh, God. I guess that lasted on through the years. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, especially in the, in the, la- the last race. Not the first, it was usually the second. Go right? back, yeah, to, that, the go back to 82, yeah. and there was a truck stop right outside the racetrack somewhere, and they had them fresh blueberries. You get that blueberry pie. Daddy loved that. He oh, loved yeah. That yeah. That uh, was we, we're going to have to do a Buffet Benny episode oh, all yeah. the places we used to oh, love man. to stop to after. What was that place up there in Michigan in Adrian we'd go to? It was Bummies. Yeah, yeah. It was like yeah. a Denny's, but it was yeah, called Bummies. Yeah, yeah, nice uh, open face roast beef sandwiches and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And th- but there was a lot of Good news. stuff we did in Michigan that was, I don't know, I, you're right there at all the headquarters for all the manufacturers. And it seems like we always had a lot of good times. Well, because it was summertime when we was out of school and we went to the races. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was, and, and, and like you said, on them old two lane roads going up there on 35 and through West Virginia and whatnot. <laughs> and there was another place we'd stop at going through West Virginia, and it was like in a house. Speaking of an open faced roast beef, mm-hmm. but they had a roast beef sandwich there, and I'm just, I don't. I don't even know how Daddy and them knew it. Well, Pocono had that house that you used to go eat at. Yeah, and, what was it called? Uh, the Blakesley Inn. I think yeah, it was. I, think I know it was. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was good yeah. Food. yeah, yeah. And it was basically know. someone's house. The Blakes, yep, yeah. yeah, the Blakesley Inn. But that's the kind of restaurants we went to as kids. But, but you talking about restaurants and stuff and driving to races. Remember talking about the Travco camper? Yep. Going to Michigan, you know, you'd leave the house. It'd be dark. I don't. What would it be three or four o'clock in the oh, morning? Head there. Yeah, yeah. But you'd be asleep and you'd wake up, and Daddy be driving the camper, and Mama be back here cooking, cooking breakfast, breakfast as we're going down the road. Going through them mountains. Mm-hmm. And yeah. The way it was cut up. We're going through them cold oh, towns. Oh yeah. But but that's good memories of her cooking breakfast and it was a good time. And that was on them terrible roads. That's pretty nice up there yeah. now. But that was back on. The, that's like something <laughs> you see on TV. Oh, it was it, terrible. People wouldn't believe. It. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, well, we'll be back with some more memories on our next episode. Any so. more requests, always welcome. Thanks for the comments. Like and subscribe. Leave some comments. Mm-hmm.